along with this power, they are the third biggest shareholder. Understand this, people of God. They're the third biggest shareholder in the Corrections Corporation of America. They are the third biggest shareholders in the private prison industry. So, if you are responsible and you have the power and you have the wealth to determine what people see, determine what people hear, and at the same time, you have shares in the prison industry. So if you're going to promote criminal behavior, and on the other side of the spectrum, you own the prisons, then it's going to be in your best interest to promote criminal behavior, because that criminal behavior is what's going to influence or what's going to put money in your pocket. See, Proverbs 21 and 5 says, the plans of the diligent leads to profit as surely as haste leads to poverty. See, when we operate hastily, see, we lack the proper understanding. When we operate hastily, we operate without giving the proper consideration of thought. And then what we do is we operate and we operate in something and, and, and we operate prematurely. We operate and we do things before it's time. So we're not operating in, 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 in order. Because see, where there's no order, there's no increase. So we're not operating in order because we have an out of sync with time. See, Ecclesiastes 3 and 1 says, To everything there is a season, and a time to every person, a time to every purpose of under the sun. So bear with me, bear with me. So when God spoke creation into existence, he said, let there be. He spoke divine purpose. See, purpose has a beginning and an end. And the purpose of man is summed up in his priority, in his, in his position, and in his assignment. See, God created man in his image and in his likeness. In his image and in his likeness created he male and created he female. And so, although Adam separated us from the power and presence of God, Jesus, our Lord and Savior, restored and redeemed us. See, God created man in his image. Satan created niggas. God created male and female in his image. But Satan created females that began with B, but it sound like witches. Satan created women that begins with W, and it sounds like the four. Or words that begin with H, and it sounds like toe. Y'all know what I'm saying. So, this is what Satan created. So when we hear in this nigga language, we hear in these B words, we hear in these H words, these W words, and we have three-year-old little girls listening at them, bouncing to the beat. What is that young girl going to think about herself or women around her as she gets older, constantly hearing women described as bees, constantly hearing women described as whores, constantly hearing women, you know, being degraded? What is she going to think? Where is the virtue in our women behind that? Okay? So these little young girls, three years old, they bounce through this because kids are sharp today. They're very sharp today. They learn quick. They gravitate into stuff quick. But that young girl, she's hearing this stuff, but now her self-image is devalued. What she think about other women? 
is devalued. See, you may have women out there who have a good self-esteem and they're on a, on a move and doing things. Okay, that's fine. But we're talking about masses and how things are affecting the masses, okay? So now, 1 Peter 5 and 8 tells us, it says, Be sober, be vigilant, because our adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. How are you devoured? You're being drawn. They're soliciting you. Here, join this lifestyle. Here, join this culture. Here, join this life of disobedience. Here, join this lawlessness. See, I know we have a gripe. And I know that I know that the law and the, the administration of the law and the government it has failed in so many ways. But being lawless is not the answer. Gravitating to that criminal lifestyle is not the answer. See? And so see Satan used distractions. Alluring the loss into activities of haste, instant gratification, with hollow promises. See, the wealthy plan with diligence, but those are operating in poverty needs to live. those are operating in haste leads to poverty. See, see, Satan's gonna say, hey, let's go to the casino. See, I make an investment anticipating a huge profitable return, going to the casino. I see people lose their houses, lose forty thousand dollars that they didn't have down the drain because they're hooked on that casino. They look for instant gratification. I've seen people go to the racetrack, invest, anticipating a huge profitable return, but that's only if they pick the right horses. Instant gratification. See, I've seen people play the lottery religiously trying to get those numbers together, anticipating a huge profitable return. But you have to pick the right numbers. Now on the flip side of that, and the more illicit or illegal side of the spectrum, if I invest in drugs, I anticipate a huge profitable return. Profitable return. See, the wealthy plan using preparation, wise consideration, and then diligently work and using that power to achieve a purpose, purposeful outcome. Because see, when time and purpose meet, they come to a point of maturation or they come to a point of maturity. They come to a point of being ripe. They come to a point of being developed. Because see, it developed in a proper process of time. But when we try to do something in haste before it's time, premature because we want instant gratification, that shortcut, that's operating out of sync with the proper time and order. See, the word of God tells us in James 1 and 2 4, my brethren, count it all joy when you fall into various trials, knowing that testing of your faith produces patience. But let patience have its perfect word that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. So what he's saying is, see, when you're operating in the guidance of God, and even though you may see your friends doing something, they're walking around with the bling bling, they're walking around with the fancy cars, they're walking around with the women and taking these shortcuts, they're walking around and trying to gain the, through instant gratification, doing things that are illicit, illicit and illegal. But if you're patient and you do the right thing, those things will come to you, and they come to you later. I've seen guys who call themselves cool in school, and you had these nerdy guys, who, you know, the, you know, none of the ladies liked, and they were kind of like, uh, you know, kind of squares, you know. And but all of these guys that were players and cool, and then thirty years later, you see them, and you know, they're not doing much of anything, still running around still trying to do the things they're doing, but those guys that were square, those guys that were operating lawfully, not being tempted by those different trials that came their way, they wind up having the good wives, and they wind up having the beautiful wives. They wind up driving them nice cars. 
because of their patience, because of their sowing good things into their future. Okay? But see, we have a, we, we, we have a, we have a, a idea that's trying to generate a different mindset that's bringing our children, bringing our young men into this, 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 this instant gratification. Okay? So, I'm going to be, let's go to the book of Matthew. Uh, Matthew uh, 4, and starting with 1. 4 and 1, okay? When you get to say amen. Bear with me, y'all. I'm almost done. Then was Jesus led up of the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. And when he had fasted forty days and forty nights, he was afterward and hunger. He was hungry. And when the tempter came, who was to Satan? When the sister came to him, he said, If thou be the Son of God, command that these stones be made bread. But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. So now the devil takes it another step. He says, Then the devil taketh him up into a holy city and set him on the pinnacle of the temple. And he said unto him, If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down. For it is written, He shall give his angels charge concerning thee, and in their heads they shall bear thee up lest any time thou dash thy foot against a stone. So what he's saying is, see, God has given the angels charge over you so you can jump. And when you jump, you know, they'll stop you and they'll catch you before you hit any stone and hurt yourself. And that's what he's saying. But Jesus turns back and he says, wait a minute, wait a minute, hold on. I'm, I wasn't born yesterday. He said unto him, it is written again, thou, thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. See, by doing something foolish, just to see what God is, will do, that, that is tempting God. And so again, the devil taketh him up into an exceeding high mountain, and showeth him all the kingdoms of the world, and the glory of them, and saith unto him, All these things will I give thee, if thou wilt fall down and worship me. And see, we have to understand that a lot of these young men, are giving these same kind of promises. Understand this. See, do your diligence. Do your reading. Find out what some of these guys are saying that's been in the industry, how they were tempted, what different things were done with them, okay? What different things were, were said to them and promised to them. See, they take them to these fancy parties. Anybody and everybody's there. These big elaborate parties at these uh, uh, mansions, and you know, you you you're there, and you know, you caught up in all of this, all of this wealth, just circulating around you. You 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 get in the spell of it, and wow, they're offering you this. Hey, you just signed right here. And see, and some of these artists, they have admitted that they had to sign in blood. See. These children don't know what they're getting themselves caught up in this web, okay? And so, see, God always tempted. Throughout the Old Testament, God always tempted Israel. See, because he wanted to expand the capacity of their understanding. See, when you go to Deuteronomy 8 and 16, he says, this is Moses telling them, he says, who fed thee in the wilderness with manna, which your fathers knew not. See, that was only something that God gave because he's the Jehovah Jireh, the, Jehovah Jireh, the provider, all God always will provide. And so he gave them something that didn't even exist. But God miraculously made this happen so they'll be able to have something to eat. So he brought manna out of the sky. And this is what Moses is telling them. He said that your fathers will not that he might humble thee. See, God could have given them quail. He could have given them turkey. He could have given them steak. This is, this is God. He could have did all of that. See, he 
could have did all of that. But he said he wanted to humble them that he might prove them. When he said prove them, meaning that means test them to do good at a latter time. See, they were the forerunners of what God wanted for Christians for today. But they were the forerunners. See, in the book of Galatians 4, 4 to 7, God speaks of the fullness of time referring to a proper time, the proper season, to send his only begotten son, only begotten son to be born of a woman. See, it took Israel 40 years to get to Canaan. And you know what? Canaan was only about 240 miles away if they were going in a straight line. But God had them going all the way around because God wanted to try to get something out of them. He wanted them to learn something. He wanted to draw from them and get them to understand who he is. That they may, that they may obey him and live correctly. But see, it was impossible for man to obey God and meet the demands of the law because it just, man could not do it alone. It took the Holy Spirit. That's why Jesus had to come. If man was able to do it, it would be no, no, no sense for Jesus to come. But Jesus had to come to take the sins of the world because man could not meet the demand of a perfect law because man was not perfect. Okay? So now, the law of opposition, how much time do I have for you? What time is now? 716. Okay, I have a little bit more time. Okay, now, the law of opposition is a critical function that determines the quality of our experience. What the Word of God is telling us is our struggles define our character. They develop us. They strengthen us. They mature us. They empower us. In fact, there's an old cliche that says, we used to say back in the day, it says, if it doesn't kill you, it'll make you stronger. Meaning, whatever pain you're dealing with, whatever hurt you're dealing with, whatever problem you're dealing with, if it don't hurt, if it don't kill you, it'll make you stronger. So one of the problems in our society, capitalist society, society today, and when I say capitalist society, that means an economic and political system in which a country's trade and wealth and industry are controlled by private owners for profit rather than, rather than by the state. So you have some societies that, um, that are socialist, and what happens is uh, they, 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 the state pays for everything for the most part. The schooling, the, the, the college, medical, transportation. So all of these things are taken care of because the state and the wealth is, is owned by the government and the government distribute what is needed for the people. Okay? But we live in a capitalist society where things are done by for profit. And I'm not saying anything is wrong with that. I'm not, that's, that's not what I'm saying. But when big business have the power and the authority to influence congressional, congressional behavior, then it's a problem. See, when they have the opportunity to determine and to help influence legislation of laws based on their wealth, then it's a problem. See, the most notorious example is the Washington-based American Legislature, Legislative Council. This is a policy organization funded by the Corrections Corporations of America and, G and GEO, which successfully championed the incarceration promoting truth and sentencing and three strikes you out sentencing laws. If the motive of the private prison industry were the good hearted desire to get hold of inmates as quickly as possible for the purpose of sooner successfully rehabilitating them 
maintenance of a 90% capacity occupancy rate will be considered a huge barrier, not a, a functioning uh, uh, prerequisite. Let me say this over, okay? What this is saying is that the American Legislative Council is owned and operated and, and influenced by and, 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 and initiated by Corrections Corporations of America and GEO, which are uh, uh, the, the biggest shareholders in the media and the biggest shareholders in the prison industry, see? And so, in 2011, and I don't know if any of you remember this or not, but the, the Canadian Anti-Consumerist and Pro-Environment Group initiated Occupy Wall Street. And the main issue was social and economic inequality, greed, political corruption, and the undue influence of corporations in legislature, corporations in government. See, we have 1% of the wealthiest Americans who control the governmental outcome of the other 99% of Americans. So the, ide the ideal business offers a product which enjoys an inelastic demand. And what I mean by inelastic, that means a product that people need or desire, and they would get this regardless of price. Okay, so the subject quickly changed. See, this is this is someone who's talking about. They're talking about a meeting that they had, and these were media clients who found a a, a, a a new a new venture that they wanted to invest in, and so it was talking about all of these rap artists that came to this meeting at this big elaborate mansion and it was it was just I mean it was it was amazing but then a speaker came up and he said it looked like a person that may have owned the place but he started talking about something and then he said the subject quickly changed that's the speaker went on to tell us that the respective companies we represented had invested in a very profitable industry which could become an even more rewarding with our active involvement. And he's talking about the rap artists. He said, this industry will be even more rewarding with the rappers' active involvement. He explained that the companies we work for had invested millions into the building of privately owned prisons and that our positions of influence in the music industry would actually impact the profitability of these investments. I remember many of us, he said, he's saying, many of us in the group immediately looking at each other in confusion. So what they, what they were saying is, they were saying, what we need you to do, because we have some people who invested in us, people like the Vanguard Group, we have people that invested in the private prison industry, and they're saying that they want you to influence this criminal behavior. They want you to influence this lawlessness. They want you to influence this gunplay shooting up. They want you to influence this woman bashing. They say they want you to influence this drug dealing. They say that they want you to influence this materialism because when you do this, those who get out and start acting out these things that they see, they will become a product of the prisons. And so that's what they're saying. So they say they need their help because the private business industry, they're relying on you guys to represent. See, it doesn't even matter about the music anymore. It doesn't even matter. It's not about what, what how, you know, before we had the Anita Bakers, we had Whitney Houston, we had Michael Jackson, we had people that had distinctive sounds, and these distinctive sounds, that was music. And I know we hear this a lot, but this is not even about talent anymore. It's about who's getting exposure. And if you own, if you own the media, you determine who's going to be a star. You determine who's going to be rich. You determine who's going to be out there. 
You determine who's going to represent you. You determine who's going to be an icon. You determine who and how you're going to be represented and how you're going to be able to influence the masses based on what you put out there. So it doesn't matter about time. They're going to put who they want out there based on who they can believe that's best served their interests. And what is their interest? Building the prisons. See, right now they have a 20-year contract with many 48 states in America. 48 states, including uh, Arizona. In, in fact, let me deal with Arizona. Arizona have 100%, they have to have their beds 100% occupied. See, the contract is we'll pay for the prisons here and we'll build here and we will, we will give jobs here, but the catch is you have to have this prison 100% full. Any bed that's not full or filled, the state is going to have to pay for. That means it's going to come out of the tax dollars of the residents. Okay? This is a 20 year. Why, why do you think kids, young people are getting on the side that used to be a minor offense? Even child support is a criminal offense now. It wasn't a criminal offense when I was growing up, it was a misdemeanor. If that. Now it's a criminal offense. And check this out. See, when you, when, you, when you have the power to influence policies, you can do this. Check this out. Now, if you have a criminal record, and now you have a, 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 a child support order against you for non-payment, now you can serve three to 10 years in prison for not paying your child support because you had a criminal offense which gave you two strikes. That easy. It's that easy. But when these laws are influenced by those who are getting our profiting off of the prisons, see, we have to look very carefully because they're saying, let us feel wiser with them. And our children are being drawn. And we're sitting back and we listen to this music with our children and we're thinking it's okay. Our young men are being targeted. Our young women are being targeted. Our young daughters are being targeted. I'm not, I'm not getting on rap music. Because see, when rap music first came out, it was talking and speaking on uh, 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 an unfair legislative system and legal system and police system that was against the, dis the disenfranchised, that was against the poor. See, it was talking about how people were being exploited by the legal system. They were talking about issues. But now it has become a vehicle to encourage corruptible behavior. It has become a vehicle to encourage criminal behavior. It has become a vehicle to encourage lawlessness. Because see, when you operate in this lawlessness, or this criminal behavior, they have prisons for you. More and more things, check this out. More and more things are becoming criminal offenses because they have to maintain the occupancy. Any bed that's not filled, it costs each resident roughly $263 a year out of the taxes. That's a lot of money when you're talking about millions of people. So you're looking at 327 people in the media industry, the media elites who control the information, the media, that 277 million Americans are looking at. 277 million Americans are looking at. So, I just wanted to get off, I didn't, I didn't mean to deviate from what we usually speak on, on Sundays, but this is something that hit the heart, and I think that we have to be really, really vigilant, and really, really look at what's going on, going on in our communities, going on into our children's head, what they're listening to, because that's the new battleground. See, the Bible tells us our weapons are not carnal, 
meaning they're not, they're not flesh and blood. The weapons of our warfare are spiritual. Spiritual happens in here and right here. That's the battleground. So the land is about, in any war, is about acquisition. It's about acquiring territory. So what territory is occupying your child's mind? With that said, we want to thank you, God, for giving us this time. We give you praise, honor, and glory. And I hope something that was said today may have done something to somebody or for someone. We're in war. We're at war. And there are a lot of people out there who are profiting off of the misery, profiting off the imprisonment of our young men and our young women. 